Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Um, I'm glad to see you all here. Uh, welcome to the new uh, year 2021. And then um, as usual, we'll dive into the market as we try to do what we do best, which is to capture a lot of pips and make a lot of money. So today we'll be looking at them. Um, we'll have a look at the markets as we try to um, analyze um, the past year and then look forward to what we should expect or how we um, could plan our trades going forward in 2021. Now, um, yeah, for, when it comes to forex trading, there are risks associated with it, so you do not want to trade with money you cannot afford to lose. That being said, um, let us proceed. So today we'll be um, wrapping up on this topic, so we'll look at the upcoming news event, although I'm kind of doing this recording late, so this is Thursday, today is Thursday, 7th of January. But the main event or one of some of the main events that we're looking forward to it's upcoming tomorrow so we'll look at that we'll talk a little bit about cryptos and um, you know what i feel and what we should expect and then the uh, we'll look at dollar usd and then we'll then wrap up by looking at some um, some pairs that i kind of like what they are doing now um this when it comes to forex trading there's a way i approach mm -hmm. the market uh i like uh, to, to kind of like define my risk you know, risk management is kind of like the number one um, priority uh, when it comes to trading. <clears throat> so if you want to be successful, so if you want to be a successful trader, you want to be able to manage your risk and then you want to be able to multiply your um, your reward. So you want to more or less um, make sure that you know what you're diving into in terms of each trade, you want to be able to manage your risk and then do not over leverage your account. Right, because you want to approach it, this the forex market like a business. So what I like to do is figure out the market direction. You know, figure out the market direction where the market where I feel the market should be heading or is heading. Uh, define a, uh, a strategy to trade the particular system, and then you want to know where to enter. You want to know where to exit, and all of this. So today we'll not be looking so much on on the um, slides. We'll dive into the market. So this is what we'll be covering. So let's start off with the news. So I'm going to pull up my um, my chats and let us start with the news. So I go to forexfactory.com and I just want to see what uh, all the news for the week. You know, maybe we we'll look at the news for the month. So we're looking at this today being Thursday, January seventh, and tomorrow Friday we have some main impact news from um, the US. We also have some from Canada, but this is where uh, most of our that's I will be where we're looking at the news from the US. So we're looking at the average hourly earning, the non farm hearing employment change, and the unemployment uh, rates. So these values are kind of key. You also have this on the unemployment rate and unemployment change for the Canadian, which is also going to um, be a, a, a key constrictor or a key. Um, yeah, and that's, that's for the currency pay. So just now, not so long, we had this, um, the unemployment came come out better than expected for the USD. So that is um, kind of good for the USD. And so um, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking at this is because um, the dollar has been very weak, right? The USD has been very weak. So if I just go to the US dollar index, um, US dollars, yeah, so I want to just show you something. So I like to kind of like do this. What I mean is, I, I want to, I like to look at, this is this is like the, the, the US dollar against the uh, major currencies. And you can see that the dollar has been very weak, right? Dollar has been very, very weak um, for a long while. And then even heading into the past three months, it has even been weaker. You can see it's almost making a straight fall downward. Now, um, the reason I'm looking at this is because uh, the, the Forex market, if you know anything about the Forex market, you know that the market does not move in straight lines, so the market tends to you know, make waves as it makes its move. With that in mind then, we do expect the markets to keep making higher highs and higher lows, you know, higher highs and higher lows as it's heading higher, and then lower highs and lower lows as it's heading lower. Now, the USD has been very weak in the past two, three months. And this weakness in the dollar is not going to be sustained indefinitely, right? Um, long term, the dollar may be, you know, the dollar may be actually very weak and would still drop lower. 
But short term, the market is kind of due for a pullback. At least that's what I feel. So um, I just want to pull up a trend line. You know, um, let me just um, pull up a trend line to show you how the market has been dropping with so much aggression in the um, past few months. Not few months, but it picked up real strongly after the US election. Right now, you can see this is the market is in a clear downtrend. The, this, the reason I'm using this is because this kind of you can mirror this um, across whether it's the euro, USD, the GBP, USD, the NZD, USD, the USD card. Right, if the dollar is showing weakness here, then it means euro, USD will be showing strength because the dollar there is a good currency. But you can see the dollar is quite weak right now. I believe the market is due for a pullback. And then this is what I feel. Now, if you notice this trend line I drew here, you can see how the market is well below it. But there's also an inner trend line. So if I um, pull up my trend line too, and I draw another trend line from this high, you would see that there is kind of like a smaller trend line. And um, you see that market is, you know, has been ranging lower and lower. Now, I do expect some bullish trends, and we could see that pretty soon. So with, um, uh, with the news coming out from the U.S., with the, the news of the, um, the, the president-elect Joe Biden, and the fact that um, Trump, Donald Trump has uh, agreed to go without, um, peacefully, all of this could serve as catalysts to give us that dollar strength that you know, uh, a lot of traders have been anticipating for some time. So what we could see then is the dollar, if we get a, a break to the um, right side of this trend line, we would likely see the markets head up, challenge this uh, outer trend line. But overall, I feel the market is probably uh, going to head lower in the end, but we would likely see the dollar retrace, gain some strength, probably at least to to this level, right? Now, um, we can't treat this index. So what I can do, or what I will do, is to go to like the Euro USD and show you uh, um, what, um, what that would mean for that currency pair, right? So let's look at the Euro USD and uh, see what the chart there is saying. So if you notice, just like the dollar index, the Euro USD has been heading higher and higher, that means showing the weakness in the dollar as it is uh, losing value against the euro. Now, just as you can see here with this trend line I draw and this diagram I explain, I'm kind of expecting a, you know, a strengthening in the dollar which would cause this price, this pair to kind of head lower at least a time before we um, get the next move higher because the US dollar, or sorry, the US economy is not really performing well in terms of with all the stimulus and the printing of money in trillions of dollars, you know, that will have a huge um, impact on the, the currency. Not just the dollar, but I feel almost all the currencies um, globally. And that's why we may see, we would likely see very strong bullish movement in gold, in silver, in cryptos, you know, in the coming years, in the coming months, right? So now, this is what you can see, just that's just the same way I drew a trend line on the US dollar index, you can see there is an inner trend line here, and you can also draw an outer trend line here to this side. So what we would likely see, you know, is what we may have then is the dollar would strengthen, right, and then we could have the market retrace back up, and then, um, oh sorry, retrace lower to this back side of this trend line, we could have it bounce off from here, but well, I'm actually likely expecting a retest. You notice how since we broke above this level, we haven't really come back to retest it. And the market usually likes to come back to retest them previous areas. So what we would likely see then is um, a move lower to maybe try and retest this place before we start seeing the next leg higher. Now, because the US dollar is more like, you know, it's it kind of, you, you could trade the basket. So this same concept, it's the same thing that would happen to, let's say, the GBP USD, you know. So if you look at the GBP USD, you would notice that the chart is almost quite similar. You know, they're very correlated. You can see the market has been trending 
higher and higher over a long period of time and you know most recently even heading even higher so we have the same kind of scenario here where um you know the and the reason i'm bringing this out now is the fact that you know with the news coming out on friday this could serve as a catalyst kind of like kick um usd bulls into motion right the usd bulls um, i just be looking for the you know an event or something to kick start the, the run at least the not necessarily a run but more like a recovery before you know heading um higher eventually maybe in coming uh, years or so but we are likely to probably see a, a retracement because the market is due for a retracement and so what we would okay on the usd or the gbp usd you know i could draw uh, a trend line like this um okay and then i could draw a smaller one too here you know an inner trend line there's there's an outer trend line ranging from here that i could pull out here but this is the one i'm more or less quite looking at right now so um this trend line like this now so if we get a break below this trend line then what we could then see is the market head lower to retest you know the back side of this area and this move we're showing because this is daily chart is it's you know it's quite significant we're looking at you know some 500 600 pips on the gbp usd we're looking at some 400 500 pips on the euro usd or thereabout and it's the same concept you can um apply this to the NZD usd the dollar once the dollar basket and um, once the dollar gets strong the dollar basket would move almost you know in the same direction usually they tend to move in the same direction and so just being able to um, um to understand this and to 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 have this in mind have this information you understand or you have a clue as to the potential direction right now um i'm not saying the dollar is due to fall now or you should start selling it or you know start buying the dollar um but what i'm saying then is this you you want to prepare for the the next move because what would likely see is the market show some strength in terms of the dollar what i'm um, sorry my screen is still loading i'm not sure why that is so but the point then is just like um just like I pointed out here when it comes to trading, I want to know the direction, the market direction, and that's what we're trying to figure out. So the market direction for the dollar, which I feel is the market has, the dollar has been weak. And then just because, the, because of the way the forex markets work, I expect some recovery in the dollar. So we will see some dollar strength. Now, it's not my place or your place to call those tops or bottoms. So what I will do is we'll allow the market form those tops or bottoms and we'll confirm it using maybe price action in combination with like a trend line break. And then once we have that market direction, right? Once we've got some market direction, we would now look to trade the markets in the direction of the market. So once we have that confirmation, we'll be looking on um, areas to buy the market or sell the market, depending on which crosses we're trading. And then um, figuring out where to exit for profit, overall profits, because the market will not keep falling or keep rising is a good step so let's go back and look at our chart so this is the nzd usd right you can see is it is our quite split, um, similar price structure to the um to the US usd to the gbp usd very similar price pattern you can see the okay, i need to take this off so you can see the trend line and i can draw an outer trend line here which we would likely do you know, um, so what we're expecting from the market, if we get a break below trend line, okay, sorry, I think I made a uh, mistake there. Oh, okay. So um, let me just draw this, right, and have, so we have this trend line from this area, and you can see that. So now, um, like, just like I said, we're not in the middle of this stock calling for the US dollar stocks to sell right because you, you don't we don't know where it will talk so what we need is confirmation so a break below this trend line will confirm you know like the market is heading lower and then we could start looking for selling so um um for the uh, NZD usd my overall targets would likely be you know between the 0 68 90, 90 area and the 0 7, 67 and um, 50 area or 70 area here because um, we'll likely see the market come back to retest this 
um, key level here because since the market broke above it, it never retested. So what we could then see is we could see price um, do something like this. So let me. What we could see is when we get a break below this trend line, right? We could then see the market head lower. We test this area, and then if it does break below this area, you know we could see the market we test this area then you know kind of like calm down just the way the forex markets work so between this level and this level we could see the market calm down and we test this area before eventually probably making the next move higher because i feel long term the us dollar would would likely um, weaken in even further but the market is not just going to run away um it can happen but you know it's unlikely given the way price moves um, as far as the forex market is concerned. And then um, one very interesting one I like is also the USD card. So um, USD card, we have this. And then um, it's also very similar to the other pairs. It's just because the dollar is the um, quote currency or the base currency here, you could see it's showing um, the kind of like the inverse of something like the Euro USD. So you could still see the same thing. You see a, a mini trend line, uh, not a mini trend line, but an inside trend line, right? Which, if it breaks, would confirm that the recovery is in place. And then you now have something like an outer trend line. Okay, so um, let me turn off this and do this so I can draw this up. So you could see this outer trend line here, and then you also could see the inner trend line here. Now, um, for the Euro, US, for the Euro um, USD card, um, we would likely see the price come back to retest this area. Oh, sorry, take the wrong two. We would likely see price to come back we test this area and then if we get a, a, a move above that we could see the price come back and you know we test this area before we see the eventual move lower now the the importance of the reason i'm pointing out this is because these are good moves so let's say from here to currency to here you know in this case it's about you know 200 almost 300 pips 165 pips and if it does go up here's about 430 pips so they're about and just because, you know, when the dollar moves, it moves the basket, the entire basket would move. So you could take so 200 pips here, 300 pips in GBP USD, and the same thing for Euro USD, and all the USD basket. And then just this is just because you figure out direction, wait for confirmation. So you could see the market is actually kind of doing like a turnaround, but it is not our place to call this um, turnaround a break above this trend line. And once we're on this side of the trend line, you know, it will confirm that bulls are kind of in uh, are kind of serious, and so we can now start um, looking to add positions as we look to trade the markets to this our target, right? So that is on the USD, and then um, just as I pointed out to the news, the news could serve as a catalyst. You know, the result of this news could serve as propellers to um, to help that come because come into play. But what I know from the market is. You know, um, I don't usually, I don't use fundamentals to make trading decisions, but I pay attention to them. And then um, in most cases, if, uh, you know, I would I say in all cases, the fundamental tends to drive the technical. So we could then see this serve as catalyst um, to kind of like make the USD to bounce back a little. Okay, so that would be that on the USD. Um, what have I not talked about? Okay, so cryptos, let me just talk, dive a little bit on cryptos. Everybody is, uh, you know, going crazy about Bitcoin, Ethereum. They are all rising and rising and rising. And then, um, if you had any courage to buy Bitcoins or Ethereum, you know, you would be smiling uh, to the bank, right? Now, um, I do believe the Bitcoin, uh, the cryptocurrencies, both Bitcoin and Ethereum, they have, you know, they have a long way to even go for that. They still have a long way to go, to keep rising. But, however. I kind of expect some kind of um, retracement. You know, I don't know when that will be, but I do expect the markets to to retrace. You know, you could see just as I highlighted here. Um, whenever the market rallies up too much, we get a, a, a you know more like a balancing of the market. 
Um, anytime the market is about, um, let's say, two, three times more expensive uh, than the mining cost, the market tends to retrace. Now, I don't really expect the same kind of retracement where the market falls down, you know, loses 80% valuation. But what we could see is, you know, we could get a decent 30%, 40%, even 50% cut off eventually. Now, where would the top be? From where would it start falling off? I don't know. It may get to 50k before it does that. It may get to uh, 60k before it does that. It may, get, it may do that at current level, which it doesn't seem like it is interested in doing just yet. But what I do expect is, if you're looking to trade the current the, uh, um, cryptocurrencies, you know, um, you probably want to wait probably be a little bit patient because I wouldn't be interested in buying. So by buying, I mean, I wouldn't be interested in placing the trade on the on buying at this point, right? Because it's actually too high, you know, you want to buy a little low and sell high and it's too high to buy. And the, the strength of the run is too much to, and the market has not even given any confirmation to start selling. So, um, but if you're looking to just invest in terms of buy and hold, yeah, sure, you can buy and hold because I feel in four or five years time, current price, you know, would look way cheap. You'll be like, if I saw it, Bitcoin at 8K, I probably would have bought it, right? I should have bought it. But um, personally, you know, I do have, I keep um, adding to my, um, to my stack. Let's put it like that. And so, but I would be interested in, in seeing some dip, you know, some, this is, this is crazy, right? So I'll be expecting the same price to kind of retrace and then make the next leg higher. And the same concept applies to Ethereum, applies to Litecoin and all the rest of the main um, cryptocurrencies. Right? I hope you get something from that. Now let's um, go back and we'll see what we have. Because I wanted to just give up some good idea. I think I've given up um, giving some trade insights on the dollars, you know, you could, how you could trade the Euro USD, the GBP USD, the NZD card, in fact, the entire USD basket. Um, now let's look at some, you know, AUD, sorry, AUD is um, something of uh, one of um, the my better performing trades of the past week, or a few past few weeks, so Euro AUD, and then I pointed this out to some of my people. So, um, yeah, there is a structure, a price structure, a market structure that is, um, you know, that formed and a close that validated our calculation. So you could see this more or less head and shoulder pattern, right? Or you could just, even if you don't want to view it as the head and shoulder pattern, maybe because of the irregularity or the nature of it, you could just see this trend line break. You could see how price has been, and this is the weekly time frame, mind you. So this is back since 2019. You see how price has been respecting this trend line. So now we've seen we've received a break below this trend line a test of it, obviously, price, you know, moving lower, right? So if I, let's just go down to the daily time frame, so you see um, what the price in itself is doing. So we have, this is the, where the market broke below trend line. We tested it, you know, came break below. And then this is the uh, retest, retest here. I actually um, took the trade at this point. So after this close, I entered selling, you know, I entered selling, actually I've been selling um, in small uh, small positions from this area. And then I added to the position again when the price came back and we tested this area. My first target is here, so the 5700 area. So if you are not in this position, you probably want to, um, I would say, be patient. You know, wait for the market to hit to come back to 5700 area, or maybe if you get the market return back up here, which I doubt. I feel the market would head lower, maybe make some kind of rejection before breaking lower. So if we get the market to come back to 5700 area and we get a break below that, you could look to buy, sorry, to sell on a retest. You know, below here and your targets. You know, you could target any of this low, but you could, uh, let me point that out. So you could um, target this low, um, which is where my first target or my next target would be if we get a close below this 5700 area, right? Um, I also like the look of um, GBP USD, sorry, the GBP JPY. 
So the GBP, JPY, oh, I spelled that wrongly. So the GBP, JPY, yeah. Um, this is one I have my eyes on recently because of the structure of the markets, right? So we have this, um, what I, I'll call it this um, wedge pattern, right? This multi month wedge pattern where we have the price heading lower and then you could see of recently heading higher. So we are at this confluence of resistance at this point now. We are currently at confluence of resistance. And then um, this is you know this is an excellent trade or a trade uh, that you know one of two things might happen. If we get a break above um, a close above this trend line resistance, then we could see price you know head higher. The first target would be here. But um, I'm more bearish. I I don't know why. Okay, I do know why. Um, the market's reaction to this area is keeping me bearish on this pair. Uh, however, because the price is making you know higher highs and higher highs and higher lows to this area, it means we could likely see a breakout. But because of this um, bearish, very big bearish engulfing here, and this rejection candlestick, you know I'm a little bit I'm more bearish on this pair than I am bullish, right? Uh, especially with what's going on in the um, the um, in England's I mean, Britain's economy. So here is actually a good place to 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 sell. You know, you place your stop loss above this area, and then your target, you know, your, your first target should be this level here, this um, area of, uh, you could see how price reacted to that in the past here and here. So you could target this first level, and if the market breaks lower, you know, the backside of this resistance, of this um, support level. So that is, you know, one trade you could look to take now, if you wish. But you want to make sure you use proper risk management and size in your position uh, properly. So these are um, these are few trades or few market insights and market insights for a week. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk on the metals. I actually love the look of um, the gold. So let's see XAU, uh, XAU, USD, and then. Um, so the structure of gold and silver is just you know it's been it's been phenomenal, right? So um actually I've been a buyer, you know, I've been buying all the way back from here, right? And then I spoke about this 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 um, break here. And now yesterday when I was talking to some of my people, uh, I talked about that we could get a retest of this um, level here, and sure enough, we saw we've, we've seen how the market has you know, kind of like first a move lower back down to this area. So as long as this price, as long as price stays above this trend line, you know, we are likely to see the price head up to 1965 area. And then if it breaks above that, we we'll see 2015 and 2017. Um, however, if the price does not hold, we could see the market retest this level again before heading up. Now I'm very, very bullish on the dollar, on the um, gold and silver. Um, for a lot of a number of factors, one being the fact that you know currencies are just they're, they're taking a bruise um, because of the whole COVID issue, and um, these metals will serve as safe haven um, pairs uh, because of the excessive printing of money. The same thing goes with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Is why I feel they would also be benefit from the COVID and the economic um, disaster that it costs. So this is just uh, these are some of the things that we should be looking out for in January or in the market in general, and then um, I hope you've learned a thing or two. You also always want to make sure that you um, define your risk. You want to limit your risk, and then you want to own up to the risk as you look to trade. Uh, trading, trading. You want to take trading as a business. You know, in business, you think long term, and then you do well in the market. So I hope you had a good time. You can drop your questions uh, and answers. I thank you for being here. Um, do have a good time, guys. I'll see you in the next video.